Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Sterrett is the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Robin Hood Radio's very own critic. He joins us weekly. The films are... Not, or they are, because we're talking about the Academy Award nominations. And we wait with bated breath for himself. Yes, we do. Uh, we, we, the, uh, the Academy Award nominations, as we are talking now, are just a very few days away. And uh, I just thought it would be nice to sort of do a little, uh, another little wrap up on, on them and, and see what's coming along and, and mainly express my own not so humble opinions about the various nominees. Um, I have to start, Jill, with my ritual disclaimer, which is not empty ritual. It's very the full ritual uh, about uh, my not really liking the Academy Awards. Uh, I think that they are uh, silly, often movies that really have no business getting big awards, get big awards. Um, I think that it's just a bad idea generally to turn uh, matters of culture or dare I say art or even entertainment for that matter into contests. Uh, it's all such matters of opinion and, you know, it, it's just not a good idea to say this one's better than that one. You know, maybe make rough judgments like that. But anyway, the point is this is an annual ritual which over the decades has gotten way more attention than I think it deserves. And here I am giving it more attention. Uh, but they are just so closely washed by so many, many people and getting an Academy Award or even a nomination does confer um, a certain amount of, it certainly signals recognition within the film industry uh, and it does cons- confer for uh, the, the signal uh, recognition by the general public and so forth so I think that they they have to be paid some attention to even though I don't really approve of them so uh, with all of that said uh, one of the really interesting things about this year's Academy Awards and this of course all has to do with the the pandemic among other things but my gosh the distributor uh, that has the most nominations of all of the movie distributors Distributors that there are uh, is Netflix, uh, a television outfit, <laughs> an internet outfit, uh, which uh, has 35 nominations and no other distributor comes close to that. So, my gosh, I remember when it was all a question of Warner Brothers and Universal and Paramount and stuff, the old Hollywood studios, and now it's Netflix. But anyway, those are the changing times. And I actually, I think that's really just fine. I think that the, uh, the blurring of the boundaries between theatrical film and film it's available through other means, uh, whether it's on discs or streaming or cable, whatever it might be. I think the blurring of that line is a good thing because it simply makes movies more accessible to more people. I always hope that folks will watch movies in the form in which their their creators want them to be watched. Uh, if you're going to be watching it on a small screen, sit close to that small screen, pretend it's a theatrical experience. But I think it's good that so many movies are available, not as so many people in so many ways. I do think that is healthy uh, for, again, for, for, for what I will dare to call the art of film to the extent that it is an art and not merely an industry. Anyway, let's turn to the movies that are the best picture nominees and oh my gosh I really do have a favorite and it's not the big popular favorite that most people seem to be looking toward uh, let me start with the big popular favorite which again is ever since this movie came out many many months ago uh, I've been hearing people raving about how wonderful it is and I'm talking about Nomadland the movie by Chloe Zhao starring Francis McDormand and uh, I have felt since seeing it many months ago that it is a wildly overrated movie. It has very good qualities, I grant. But gee whiz, people just seem to have this worshipful attitude toward it. And I just really don't think it deserves anything even remotely close to that. So if anyone has been living under the proverbial rock, and if that proverbial rock is not equipped <laughs> with, uh, with the Internet, uh, then uh, maybe they don't know what Nomad land is but it's 
uh, about a bunch of people uh, who live this sort of wandering, nomadic sort of life. They re do not regard themselves as homeless. They regard themselves as houseless, which is to say that the Great Recession, the movie takes place around 2011, uh, has uh, just destroyed jobs all over the place. And some people have uh, opted to get, go, go on the move. And sometimes they're on the move and look in search of, of more work uh, for a little while to keep body and soul together for a while and then back on the road again. And sometimes they just seem to like wandering, to like going from one place to another, which they do primarily in vans. So we're not talking about people who live in luxury trailers here or, or who live out of their cars for that matter. For the most part, we're dealing with people sort of an in intermediate level who live out of vans and it's a very uncomfortable and difficult life. And yet they seem to find a lot of satisfactions in it. So, one reason why I consider Nomadland to be wildly overrated is that I find it in an odd sort of sentimentality-denying way to be very sentimental. Uh, it just um, has this sort of weepy, teary-eyed attitude toward, aren't these people brave? Aren't these people wonderful? And in fact, even though economic hardship has driven them into this sort of, of lifestyle, um, they, they seem to be embracing it in a weird sort of way. They don't seem to be all that unhappy with it. Uh, there's a lot of talk in the movie about human connection, about how crucial it is that we all get together and love each other and have affection for one another and support one another. But, you know, they're always then moving apart, drifting apart. They're never making any effort to stay together. They say instead of goodbye, they say, see you down the road. And we're supposed to find that just a wonderful human thing. And what I'm saying is, why are you saying that? Why not really make a strong effort to stay together and forge real lasting human ties? But they never seem to do that. So this is the sort of problem I had with the movie and my biggest problem with it. And I haven't seen much other commentary on this, so I seem to be the only person who's bothered by this, but what the heck, here I go, is that it completely leaves out um, the the, the so-called uh, uh, deaths of despair that have been so prevalent in America in recent times. Uh, the deaths from various, and not only deaths, but suffering from various kinds of opi opiate addictions, uh, from alcoholism, from other kinds of drug use, uh, the suicides and so forth. It's just not in the movie. It's just all these people were living this sort of lifestyle that most of us don't want, but for them it's not so bad and nobody seems to feel any really strong despair. And I I just say, why is that not in there? I also ran across a commentary recently, and this is the last thing I'll mention about Nomadland, but where is something that had not occurred to me. Why is it taking place uh, way back about 10 years ago from now, from when the movie came out? Why is that is that happening? Kind of interesting. One clue to that is the uh, the, 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 the um, Amazon plant, uh, where one of the characters works for a while, and that, by the way, is a big source of controversy about the movie, whether it goes too, whether it goes too easy on, on, on Amazon as an employer. Uh, but uh, why does it take place? You, you can tell from the Amazon plant that it, it, it's sort of up to date, but the movie still is supposed to be taking place about 10 years ago. Why is that? And one reason that has been suggested is that now, and in fact, over the past few years from now, uh, most of these people would be Trump voters and you'd have to deal with that. You'd have to deal with their ideology and with the polarization of America and so forth and so on. And the filmmakers just didn't want to get into that. Too complicated for them, I suppose. Too fraught. And so they just completely avoid it by setting the movie about 10 years ago. So all of these, I think, are problems with Nomadland. Again, it has lovely performances and lovely cinematography. Too lovely, in fact. Again, I think there's a certain sentimentality that creeps into all of this. But I just don't think it's a movie that deserves all the accolades it's been getting. And I don't think it should really be nominated for Best Picture. And I certainly don't think it should win Best Picture, but you know what? I bet it will. So now, the suspense has been building, right, Jill? You just can't wait to hear me say, what is my favorite out of the nominees? Cannot and wait. I'll, you're right now. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say, Jill? I said, cannot wait, as you said. Yep. Here it comes. The Father. Uh, the extraordinary movie starring Anthony Hopkins as a man who is sinking into dementia. Anthony Hopkins has been, for decades now, one of the finest screen actors that we have, and in fact, one of the finest screen actors ever. He's an amazing actor, a great actor. He can do almost anything. And if you want to see something that is at the direct opposite end of every single spectrum from Hannibal Lecter, uh, then go see The Father, a very different side of his artistic personality. Uh, and again, it is not a happy movie and it is not a movie with sentimentality and it is not a movie that in the long run 
offers out a lot of hope. What it does give us is just a beautiful, compassionate, utterly humane portrait of a man who is facing one of the worst things that can befall anyone, and it befalls a lot of people, a person who is sinking into dementia. And the movie has the courage. Uh, and by the way, there's another excellent movie out these days, uh, which is also about, about a dementia starring Anthony Tucci. Uh, and uh, it's also a very, it's called, called Supernova, and it's also a wonderful human portrait of a horrible human problem. But the father is even better. And again, it has Anthony Hopkins's wonderful performance in it. And the father has the courage to disorient the audience in ways that the main character is disoriented, which is to say, sometimes we can't be sure whether something is really happening or whether it is merely something in the unfortunately wandering, declining, decaying mind of the main character. So we are disoriented along with him, not in an uncomfortable way, I think, but in a fascinating way, in a way that probably prompts a lot of thought. So it's an amazing movie. It's beautifully written. It's beautifully directed. And above all, Anthony Hopkins gives one of the performances of all time in it. And I certainly think that he should win the uh, the Academy Award for Best Actor, although uh, there are other people who are pretty good in the running for that. One of them I'll mention is Riz Ahmed in Sound of Metal. It gives a wonderful, wonderful performance in that. And Sound of Metal is also nominated for Best Picture. And although it's not my favorite, The Father is my favorite, I think it would make a much better winner than Nomadland. Sound of Metal is the story of a young sort of punk style rock musician who is going deaf and who goes deaf and loses is the power to hear, which is quite the handicap if you are a musician. And it's about the ordeals that he goes through. Uh, it has a terrific performance by Riz Ahmed uh, as the main character. And also, I will just mention one other uh, actor in it, Paul Racy, who gives an extraordinary performance as a kind of counselor within the film. And uh, anyway, terrific, terrific performances. And it's a very good movie. And I really do recommend Sound of Metal. And it's probably the one out of the whole list that I would favor for the Best Picture Academy Award if it were it beaten out, in my view, by The Father. So how about the other movies that are nominated? It's an interesting list because a couple of the movies are openly political. Others have this sort of main thrust on sort of human interest. Uh, political movies include Judas and the Black Messiah, a fascinating movie, throwing some diversity into the race, being very much about black characters and about a very important period in modern American history, Judas and the Black Messiah, a good movie, in my opinion, though, nowhere near a great movie. And I don't think that it really, again, is quite worthy of being a best picture nominee, although, again, I certainly welcome the diversity that it represents. Another very political movie, which I think is better than Judas and the Black Messiah, The Trial of the Chicago Seven, again, about a very modern, important event in modern American history and a very, very, very well done film. Wonderful acting, fascinating screenplay and a terrific look, fictionalized look, but look at real American history. The big problem with it is the final scene, which is this triumphalist over the top thing that really annoyed me and really annoys a lot of people. If not for the final scene, I would regard it as an excellent contender for best picture of the year. But well, the final scene is in there. So I think it's a good movie, but far from a great movie. Um, Mank, uh, which is a story about the late great filmmaker Orson Welles and various people in his circle, including Herman Mankiewicz, his writer at one point in his career. Uh, it's a good movie, but I think uh, I, I just really, really, really don't like the dialogue of the movie. It's well directed by David Fincher from a screenplay written by his late father. And the screenplay struck me as glib, facile, one snappy line after another, on and on and on. There's nothing real about it. There's nothing truly human about it. So the dialogue, the soundtrack sinks Mank for me, even though it's a very nice movie to look at. Um, Minari, again, this is one of our human interest movies, a very sweet story about immigrants. Again, we have very welcome diversity in the Academy Award race, very welcome diversity brought into American cinema by this, this lovely movie. Uh, the acting is very nice. I think it's very much too heavy uh, on the cute child business and the cute grandma business. Uh, the human interest here gets, I think, a bit cloying. Uh, but it's a nice movie. Again, it's just not movie a movie that one thinks of as sort of the best picture of any given year. And the last film I'll mention, Jill, the last film out of the best picture nominees, the one I haven't mentioned so far is Promising Young Woman. 
which is receiving a lot of praise as this bold feminist statement. Uh, I don't find it a bold feminist statement. I find it kind of a nasty movie uh, that is really not even all that well done. I kept seeing things over and over and over that I just didn't believe that wouldn't happen. That couldn't happen. That's ridiculous. Uh, the whole thing seems to be uh, geared toward creating a series of momentary effects rather than a coherent overall package with a co coherent and 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 uh, uh, embraceable uh, point of view. <laughs> so to sum up again, Nomadland will probably win. I think it's wildly overrated and shouldn't win, but hey, it probably will. And The Father, which is perhaps, as they say, a dark horse in this race, is far and away my favorite. And if Anthony Hopkins does not win the Academy Award for Best Actor, then something is seriously askew in the cosmos. But that perhaps is a bigger topic than today's uh, uh, episode can, can contain. So, Jill, those are my opinions. Once again, The Father is my favorite for Best Picture. We'll see what happens in a few days. My Oscar-nominated story this week. Thank you very much, David Sterrett. Films in Focus, the Academy Award nominations. Thank you.